What's up guys? I'm sure a lot of you saw the video that I made a couple of days ago about CAC 17, but just to give you a quick TLDR about what's going on, this person, or more likely this group of people, are deploying hundreds of malicious Tor relays, almost 1,000 at its peak, and they are using these servers to try and track people down that are using Tor, and they're trying to track down the physical location of different Onion services. Now, the design of the Tor network is pretty good for staying anonymous since it bounces your traffic between three international servers. But if all of these happen to be run by a malicious party like CAC-17, then they can literally see everything that you're doing on Tor, your real IP, each site that you're trying to go to. And obviously this is really, really bad especially when you take a second to look at the current metrics of the Tor network. There's barely 6,000 relays that are running right now. So if CAC-17 were to just scale their efforts a little bit, like even just one order of magnitude greater than what they've done so far, they would actually own over half of the relays. But luckily, running a Tor node or a relay by yourself is really, really easy. All you need is a spare computer, it could even be a Raspberry Pi or an old laptop, and an internet connection. In fact, you actually don't even need these things. You technically don't need internet or a spare computer at your house because you could set up this software to run on a VPS as long as it's not against their terms of service, which it usually isn't, especially if you aren't running an exit node. So let's get started with the setup. This is the technical setup page for Tor, uh, and this is the link to it, which I'll also include in the description of this video. Now, there's six questions that you're supposed to clarify for yourself before going and configuring Tor. So first is, do you want to run a Tor exit or a non-exit? Uh, this guide that I'm going to be showing you is gonna be for a middle or guard relay, AKA a non-exit relay. And that's what I recommend most of you all do, because first of all, CAC-17 is primarily running these kinds of relays. So if you want to help dilute their power and what they're trying to do, then this is what's going to hurt them the most. And secondly, exit relays do have some extra liability with them because the traffic that they handle is going out of Tor to the regular internet. So if there's illegal traffic that's going on in there, you could get your internet service terminated or worse. So it's highly recommended that you just clear that with your ISP first, uh, let them know what's going on and maybe let local law enforcement know, although I would think that they, uh, the ISP might reach out on your behalf because typically they're going to be the ones that notify them but yeah there's extra hoops to jump through with exit relays which is beyond the scope of this video uh, then we're talking about ports so we'll actually cover that during the setup when we're inside of the config file what email address do you want to use in the contact info field so this is not actually something that's required to use contact info, but it is required if you're going to run a whole bunch of different relays. So that's something you might want to think about. Usually with the spirit of Tor, you would want it to be an email that's kind of difficult to trace back to you. So if it's first name, last name at yourdomain.com, that might not be what you want to use. But again, it's up to you. I'm sure there are people out there that use that as their relay. And then the other, the rest of these are more technical stuff, which we'll just cover when, again when we're inside the config file. So we'll click on middle guard relay because that's what we want to use. And then it tells you to choose your plat platform below. Now, pretty much all of these are the same, okay? Any of the BSD or Linux variations are essentially the same. Only difference is gonna be the package manager you use to install Tor and the different commands for your init system depending on what init system you're using. And then of course Windows is its own special little snowflake, but I honestly don't even recommend running a Tor relay on Windows anyway because Windows is pretty spooky. Currently I'm booted on a Linux Mint machine. So I'm going to choose Debian. And this is actually what I'll probably use for my ThinkPad as well, which will be the true relay. I'll go into that a little bit more, but just as like a brief mention, you don't really want to be running a Tor relay on your daily driver machine. You want it to be something that runs on a dedicated device. 
So the first thing you wanna do is enable automatic software update. So that's gonna be important, one, to just make sure that your OS is getting the latest security patches, but also the Tor service itself needs to be getting the latest security patches. Then you want to configure the Tor projects repository. Uh, I'm actually not going to be doing that step, but it is recommended if you're using Debian because, or any Debian based distro, just because the version that's available is usually gonna be older than the latest version. Uh, so this is the steps to do that. If you're on a more bleeding edge distro like Arch, I'd imagine that this isn't really necessary. Um, in fact, why don't we just check real quick? Yeah, it's not. So I think when I uh, install it on the ThinkPad, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just use an Arch based distro. But anyway, let's continue on with the example. Install the package. So apt update or whichever package manager you're using and then install Tor with it. Now for the fun part, let's edit the config file. So go ahead and open up your terminal and you can open it up with your favorite text editor. It is at Etsy Tor and it's called Tor RC. All right, so um, first thing we have to start with is the nickname. Uh, so this technically isn't really required, but it's just a good thing to do. Like have a handle for your relay, that way people don't have to refer to it with a key, especially, it's even gonna be good for yourself to manage your relays if you're going to end up deploying a whole bunch. So I just have this written as test relay, uh, cause like I've said, I'm not actually gonna be running a Tor relay on this computer, I'll have it on the ThinkPad. Uh, then we're going to do contact info. So this is another one that is not required. Um, it technically isn't even a hard requirement if you're going to deploy a bunch of relays, but you could end up getting them blacklisted just because it's kind of spooky uh, to the Tor people if you're trying to deploy a whole bunch. I mean, that's literally what CAC 17 is doing now. Although before they didn't have, or rather they did use an email address and if you actually go through the Tor mailing list, apparently they've used that same email address to try to advocate against updates to the Tor network that would make their attack more difficult to do. So that's an interesting little bit of trivia. Uh, but yeah, I have this blank for now. Uh, if you're just running one relay, not really necessary. And then if you're running a bunch, definitely make sure you put an email in here. Then OR port. So. This is a necessary setting. It is the port to advertise for incoming Tor connections. I'm just gonna use 9001, that's the default. And of course you have to also make sure whatever server you're using this on that this port is actually open. And then that's, I think that's pretty much it for the uh, default configuration or for the minimal minimum configuration. Uh, there is also, Let's see, so yeah, this is where it talks about the bandwidth rate. So you can limit the amount of bandwidth that goes through here, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not on a metered connection. So we are all set with this file. Go ahead and save it. And then if your relay is running systemd, you'll do a systemctl enable tor and then systemctl start tor. And bam, now I am a tor relay. Now I know that this is a little bit underwhelming, nothing popped up, nothing cool happened. So I'm going to show you guys a way that you can see some cool stuff right in your command line, things like bandwidth and statistics about your tor relay. To see this, you'll want to install an application called Nix, which is an open source GPL3 monitor for Tor. It gives you event logs, it gives you connection data, similar to what you might see from Netstat, and much, much more. So to download it, it's just apt install Nix on your Debian-based distro, or if we look on this download page, you can see all the different options to install it. You can even install it with pip. Now to actually see your traffic with Nix, you have to set up a control port, otherwise you'll just get this error that it can't connect to Tor, maybe it's running without a control port. Uh, so let's go back into our Tor RC file. And we're going to look for 
control port. So here we go. Uh, we just have to uncomment this. So this is the port that we're going to use for the control port. And you have to also have a hash password. So you can see like what it has here. Uh, actually, let me just do this real quick. So uh, you can either use hash password or you can use cookie authentication. So go ahead and generate, if you wanna do password, a password for your relay in your password manager. So I think what I'm gonna do is just give it a little bit more entropy. All right, and then we will accept that and apply it. And then I'll just go ahead and copy this. I'll just put it in notepad for now. Uh, so as you see here in this file, there's just hash control passwords, right? So we're not gonna put our password in here in plain text because that would be stupid. So let's go ahead and actually should be able to leave this open. So we'll go ahead and create a hash of the password. We'll run tor hash password and then paste in the password and then that's going to output the hash so i'll just copy that and now i can go back in here paste it in and uncomment it right quit and then i'm going to system ctl stop tour and then start tour again and then i probably have to restart this terminal as well and now when i run nix it prompts me for the controller password so then we'll just copy that again from the password manager paste it in and bam now i'm able to see the statistics of my tour relay and we can also see that I'm running an outdated version of Tor because I didn't update the uh, repositories to get the version from their repos because like they mentioned in the instructions, the Debian one is outdated, uh, but that's okay. I'm just doing this as a test. I'll be using Arch on the real relay, which should have an updated version in the repo. So like I was mentioning earlier, you really want this to be on a dedicated device. You don't want it to be on your daily driver PC like I'm doing here for this example. And the reason for that, well, there's, there's a few different reasons for that. One is that I don't do automatic updates on the PCs that I actually use because I like to update things manually myself. So that's one reason why I personally wouldn't do it. But also, you don't want other things to interfere with this tour service. Like, obviously, this is my daily driver, so I've got a whole bunch of different packages installed on here. The attack surface for this relay would be much, much bigger than just a headless Linux server that's running on a Raspberry Pi or on a VPS somewhere. And also, any other things that I might be running that could potentially crash the machine, like if the machine crashes or it runs out of RAM, those are all things that could affect the uh, performance of this bandwidth. So you don't want any of that going on. You basically want your Tor Relay to just be a dedicated device. Maybe you have a couple of other services running on it, but you don't really want it to just be running in the background on your gaming computer. And another reason is you have to keep your Tor Relay running for a long time in order to actually get a lot of bandwidth that's put through it. Like you can see right now, they're only putting like 16, you know, less than 16 kilobytes per second through this relay, even though I have up to a gigabit per second to give. And this is just because it's only been running for a few minutes, so I'm not really trusted. They don't know, like I could be a malicious, person that's trying to de-anonymize users. I could be like CAX, well, I guess it wouldn't be CAX 17, it'd be like CAX 21. Uh, so yeah, it has to be up for a while. I think also putting an email in your contact info helps with this too. It helps you to become trusted faster so that you can actually use your bandwidth and actually contribute it to the network. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and go set up your own Tor node today. Let's pump up the bandwidth. 
on the Tor network. Let's increase the number of relays to make it faster and safer and defeat CAC-17. We can form a literal Zerg against this threat actor, which is almost certainly bioluminescent in nature.